here to give the House DFL message on the campaign season and the 2012 session in general. We have House Minority Leader Paul Thiessen. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. So, Leader Thiessen, let's begin with the key message of the GOP being in the majority. Coming out of session, it stated that balancing the budget without raising taxes was, of course, the big message. Now, it's been about a month since the end of session. How do you think this message is resonating with Minnesotans? Uh, people don't believe it. Uh, a, because it's not true, uh, the budget isn't balanced. We still face about $4 billion a hole that we're going to have to fill when we come back next January. Um, you know, and uh, also the way that it was done, you know, in a way, you know, barring from our schools, you know, having this IO, IOU to kids, taking the tobacco bonds. Uh, it just wasn't a fiscally responsible way to balance the budget. Uh, you know, if I'm the Republicans, I can see why they're pointing to that, because they really have nothing else to point to. Um, but it's just simply not false, and Minnesotans don't believe it. So let's talk about what the DFL is pointing to, that little was done these last two years, essentially to help the middle class in particular, and that without Democrats stepping up to create jobs, it might not have happened, particularly with bonding and the stadium bill as well. So do you think that this message is enough to take a majority of seats back in the House? Oh, I, I really do. I mean, I think uh, the Democrats clearly demonstrated a couple things. One, people are really frustrated with uh, the dysfunction in government, and we showed that we're willing to step up and actually lead and govern, and I think that's important to Minnesotans. Secondly, I, you know, it's very clear uh, that this middle class squeeze that we've been seeing for a long time is continuing and that people are uh, very concerned about it. They've seen their property taxes go up as a result of Republican decisions. They've seen tuitions go up uh, as a result of the Republicans' historic cuts to higher education. Uh, they've seen their class sizes in their schools grow. I mean, it's important for people to remember the Republicans actually proposed cutting education uh, before Governor Dayton kind of convinced them at the end of the day that um, at least we should hold them harmless. Um, and so all these things contribute to this middle class uh, squeeze that we've been seeing. People are frustrated out there and the Democrats are the ones that are stepping up and saying our priority is the middle class. Uh, the Republicans have demonstrated, in fact took the state to government shutdown uh, to protect the wealthiest Minnesotans and big corporate special interests. I think that's really what this, um, what this election is going to be about and it's not just the politics of it, but it's this question of how do we actually grow an economy that's going to work for most people. And I think our answer is we need to grow a middle class so people have money in their pockets that they can go out uh, and spend in Main Street small businesses. Uh, just getting out of the way of big corporations on the wish and the prayer that that's going to trickle down to the rest of us, which is kind of the Republican approach and philosophy that they've demonstrated through their votes and uh, over the last two years it hasn't worked and it's not going to work we need to grow this middle class and it's resonating with people it is resonating is that what you're hearing oh absolutely yes uh, okay let's talk about a little bit about the two ballot initiatives coming on um, in in November as well voter ID being one of them it is going to be heading to court <clears throat> excuse me and about a week ago several groups did petition the Sup Minnesota Supreme Court to remove the amendment question from the ballot due to concerns about the accuracy of the wording. The legislature is among those working to keep the measure on the ballot. Where does the House DFL stand on the issue? Well, I think there's a lot of questions to be answered specifically about whether we should get involved in this lawsuit. In fact, it's unprecedented. That's the first time that the legislature would actually intervene and become a party in someone else's lawsuit. That's never happened in state history. So it's a big step. Plus, it costs a lot of money, and we don't have a lot of money uh, over here at the state. Uh, you know, on the larger issue, though, I do think that it's a legitimate question for the court to decide because what they're talking about on the ballot question, it just focuses on this photo ID and that you're going to get free IDs. Uh, but what the impact of this amendment would have would be essentially to eliminate, and from my perspective, absentee balloting in this state in any meaningful way, uh, not allow soldiers overseas to send in their ballots, and really have a huge impact on same-day registration, which has made Minnesota a, a leader in voter participa participation in the state. So I think there's a very legitimate question that needs to be decided about whether this ballot question is accurate. According to most polls, the majority of Minnesotans are in favor of voter ID, though. So what, how, what do you think the outcome will be if it is indeed on the ballot? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a challenging, uh, it's a challenging uh, one for the folks that are trying to defeat it. Uh, and I think uh, if it's just about whether you should show an ID at the polls, I mean, that comes with a lot of, uh, you know, implications for disenfranchising people. But I, you know, I also get why the average Minnesotan looks at that and says, okay. But when you start thinking about the fact that, you know, you're not going to be able to vote absentee, you may not be able to have same-day registration in the state, when those consequences start to roll out, I think that there's a possibility. And I actually take a little comfort uh, in the defeat of the property tax amendment up in North Dakota. I mean, it shows that people in this country, and I think it's very true of Minnesotans, are actually willing 
willing to step back and look at, okay, what is this really going to mean? And amending the Constitution, I think people feel is a big deal. So I still think that uh, there's a legitimate and good discussion we're going to have before November. And what about the ban on same-sex marriage? The definition of marriage as a union between one man and one woman, to use the official terms. Right. Do you think that Minnesota could be the first in the nation to defeat this proposal? Oh, I really, really do, and I think the polls are starting to are starting to reflect that. And as we talk to people, you know, on the campaign trail, again, people, you know, may have different views on that issue. But amending the Constitution is a big deal. And at the end of the day, Minnesotans have a very fundamental sense of, of fairness, and their understanding uh, that this amendment really isn't fair to friends or neighbors, to people that they know. Uh, and when that starts to sink in with folks, uh, then I think that they really, uh, uh, really come around to saying we shouldn't be putting this in our Constitution. Um, and you know, in addition to that, uh, I think that kind of the scare techniques that have worked in other states are going to work less well in Minnesota because people have more made up their minds one way or another. There's not as many people kind of in the middle undecided about this issue. And those kind of uh, fear-based political, uh, uh, political ads and attacks uh, only wor work less well uh, unless people are more undecided. Do you think having these ballot initiatives on the November ballot, do you think they're going to help or hurt the GOP? Um, well, I think uh, in particular the marriage amendment is going to help the DFL, uh, the legislative candidates, and especially in some seats um, where, that are you know, in swing districts that we need to pick up, college towns, you know, uh, St. Cloud, uh, Northfield, uh, Moorhead now with Representative Lanning retiring. Uh, these are all places where I think that the youth who really oppose this amendment and are motivated to turn out on that are going to turn out more and then they'll ultimately support Democratic candidates. Voter ID? I don't think voter ID is actually going to influence legislative uh, races one way or the other. Okay. Finally, <clears throat> excuse me, Leader Thiessen, I wanted to ask you what you think about what happened in Wisconsin with the failed attempt to recall Governor Scott Walker. Do you think that this is kind of a reflection of the appetite of Midwestern voters right now? You know, I think that, I don't think so. I mean, I think that that was a unique um, circumstance, a recall election uh, with a governor uh, and with kind of a, a time delay after the, the real um, fight that happened last summer. Uh, what I think is is most interesting uh, is that it's prompted the folks here, the, the Republicans here in Minnesota, uh, to just dig in even further on their fundamental message, which is we're going to do everything the same next year that we did over the last two years. Uh, and in the face of a huge budget deficit that we're going to be facing, um, that uh, doesn't make a lot of sense and should make Minnesotans, I think, really uncomfortable uh, because if we have this huge deficit and the Republicans are saying we're not going to be doing anything different, what I think we can expect is another shutdown at the end of the next session. Uh, that's not what Minnesotans want. They want us working together. They want us moving forward. And they don't like this device, divisive politics that underlies that, you know, this idea that because someone is getting something, we should take it away from them. I mean, that's really at the heart of, it's a, it's a politics of jealousy that the Republicans, a politics of envy that the Republicans are really pushing forward uh, and it doesn't make sense and it's not I don't think it's gonna work what we need to do is actually grow middle-class jobs and work together to make sure that that happens on a scale of 1 to 10 where would you place your confidence level that the House DFL can win the majority with this election Oh, I think it's gonna be a hard-fought election but I think you know I would put it at a 7 or an 8 okay with those words thank you so much for joining us representative Paul Thiessen we appreciate it thank you